In this day and age, we have many ways of communicating electronically. And they're all great, but to me, they can kind of get sort of impersonal. And nothing really beats an actual handwritten note. Or, to one-up that, a handwritten note that's delivered by a robot. So today, you'll learn how to get your S2 to follow a line, which can then turn it into your very own messenger bot. Let's get started. The S2 robot has two infrared emitter and receiver pairs located on its underside, which can be used to follow a line. The emitters send out a beam of infrared light, and if that beam is reflected, the sensor is over a white surface, and if it's not, it's over a black surface. Now, the carpet here at Parallax is pretty dark, so I'm going to have my S2 follow a white line on a dark surface using some white vinyl electrical tape. Now, since the S2 does use infrared for line following, there are a number of outside factors that can hinder our robot's performance. Uh, so you have to be very aware of ambient lighting conditions, uh, undesired reflectivity on your surfaces, as well as the contrast between light and dark. So why don't we put together a test worksheet that will let us know if the S2 is seeing the line in the area that we want to run the program. This will kind of help us avoid any frustration later on. Let's make our test worksheet turn on some LEDs when the sensors are over a white line. First, let's put a continuous loop in since we'll want this program to keep executing forever. Then we're going to need to monitor the states of the line follower sensors and we do this by inserting a test condition tile. This tile allows you to check the states of each of the S2 robot sensors and complete an action if that state is true or false. In our case, this button right here is for the line sensors. Clicking through gives you different sensor combinations. In our first state, we'll check if the left sensor is over a white surface and that the right sensor is over a black surface. If this is true, we'll turn on the left LED. If it's false, we'll check for another case, if both sensors are over a white surface. If this is true, both LEDs will be on. If this is false, we'll check another case, if the left sensor is over a black surface and the right sensor is over a white surface. If this is true, we'll turn on the right LED. If it's false, we'll check for our last case, if both sensors are over a black surface. If this is true, we'll turn both LEDs off. If this is false, we won't do anything and just start the whole monitoring process again. Let's run this program and see what happens. So now the LED should come on when the S2 is over a white surface and turn off when they're over a dark surface. So kind of just move the S2 around and make sure that you're seeing the line when you're supposed to. And also check the area around the line and make sure you're not getting any undesired reflections on your dark surface. And if you would like to have your S2 follow a black line on a white surface instead, you can easily just swap the logic in the S2 GUI. Now we can add movements to our conditional tiles to get our robots to follow a line. Our first sensor combination will be the left sensor over a white line and the right sensor over a black surface. Since the left sensor is over the line, we'll want the S2 to turn left to keep following it. Let's make our next sensor combination be the left sensor over a black surface and the right sensor over the white line. In this case, we'll want the S2 to turn right to keep following the line. Next, let's check if both sensors are over the white line. If this is true, the S2 should move forward. Now, if none of these cases are true, the sensors are both over a dark surface. We don't need to add another conditional tile because it's already failed each of the other checks. So if this happens, let's have the S2 pivot until it finds the line again. Let's also add our LED lighting logic back in so we can see the responses as the S2 is following the line. Now, you may notice some problems with this worksheet as is. Currently, we have the robot program, so when the right sensor is over the line, it turns right, and when the left sensor is over the line, it turns left. But what if we're on a straight path and the robot turns right or left too quickly for our sensors to detect the line again, and then the robot pivots because it doesn't see the line, and it ends up going in the opposite direction? Is there some kind of tie? 
that we could put into our worksheet to kind of account for this case? You bet there is. Let's take a look. The S2 GUI allows us to insert flags into our program, which we can use to keep track of certain conditions. In this case, we'll want to track when the robot makes right or left turns. Do so by clicking this button and inserting it into your program after the left turn. Insert another one after the right turn and click the flag icon to change the color. Now, when the robot doesn't see the line, we'll check and see if it's because the robot turned too far right or left on a straight path. Before the if none are true movement, insert another conditional tile to check for a green flag. The green flag means our last movement was a left turn, and since we're off the track, we should turn right to get back on. Next, we'll need to check for a yellow flag, which means our last movement was a right turn. Since we're off the track again, we should turn left to get back on. We'll also need to lower both flags if these conditions are met, so they don't stay raised continuously. Then, if both of these test false, we'll continue with our original pivot movement. So, let's put this line following code to the test. Now, Kevin in tech support always has some M&Ms at his desk, and sometimes I'm just too lazy to go up and get some. But now, I have my handy dandy S2 messenger robot. So, I'm going to send a very nice M&Ms please note which I can roll up and stick inside this party glass, which conveniently fits inside the S2 robot's pen port. So I'll send this little guy on his way and see if he comes back with some M&Ms. I want some M&Ms from tech support. I want some M&Ms from tech support. I hope that Kevin gets my I hope that Kevin gets my message in a robot, yeah. Message in a robot, yeah. Again? Dang. All right. On your way, little guy. Aha! Thanks, Kevin. Now, if you would like to download a copy of this worksheet for yourself, visit www.parallax.com slash go slash s2 and follow the link under the downloads and resources heading. And also keep in mind that you may need to tweak the values a little bit for your line following application. I found that the motor speeds worked really good for me, but it took a little experimentation to get them just right. And also keep in mind that if anyone is ever nice enough to send you candy, you should definitely send a thank you note. I mean, it's just polite. So, until next time, happy messaging.